An Unreal Engine MetaHuman developer gave me advice about what PC to buy for my Unreal Engine build. Not only that, they worked on this MetaHuman animator demo from the most recent state of Unreal. They also told me about the specs of the computer that they use at their work for MetaHuman and their personal computer specs. Let me tell you what they said. Let's look at the chat. I go live every Saturday, 2 p.m. Last time I went live, I asked the MetaHuman developer what what PC were they using for the MetaHuman animator demo. And so AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro CPU and the two AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX graphics cards. So that's a heavy duty build. And so I was like, I'm overwhelmed with this process of trying to figure out what is the right PC for me. I want, I, I'm a beginner to the world of Unreal Engine. I'm super excited about diving in and learning about it, using it for my storytelling. So I want a beginner PC, but I also want something that's future-proofed. And there's just so many options out there. And we all want a RTX 4090 because of the marketing. I asked Thales, what should I get? And Thales told me that the specs that they were running for this demo was high-end and um, over-the-top hardware for these demos because of the time all developers use a single graphics card and we are testing in wide ranges of CPUs. Thales said his personal GPU is a GTX 1080. So quite old these days. So quite old these days and it can drive Unreal Engine just fine. For the demo, they want to run everything at 4K at 60 frames per second, so the 4090 was ideal, but you don't need that for day-to-day. -day. My work GPU is an RTX 2080, and I was able to run the MetaHuman demo, just not at 60 frames per second. The Threadripper is good if you're a developer, but it's too expensive as they target enterprise customers. Then I started showing Thale some of the uh, builds that I'm looking at. And he said that this one looks really great. He said this compact workstation from Puget Systems looked really great. Uh, platform, it's got the Intel Core 13900K. Um, I believe that's the 14th generation. It might be 13th gen. They don't specify. This is what they were running the procedural landscape generation demo on. However... Puget won't pair this with a 4090. The highest you can go in the RTX series is a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080, 16 gigabytes. And so if you go that direction with 32 gigs of RAM, you're looking at a $4,700 build, which is pretty reasonable compared to the sky high prices of uh, what they were running the MetaHuman demo on but you could run a workstation GPU, you'd have to add another $3,800 to it. But time can be money. But for me, I'm just getting started, so. Let's hear what Corridor has to say. They use a lot of Puget systems. So the big advancement that let myself and a lot of people here start making the stuff that we're making. Nico! It's basically computers. It's the idea that you can have a home computer and there's software on it that lets you edit, it lets you color grade, it lets you do 3D renders, it lets you do 2D compositing. Caustics. And at this point now we're getting into artificial intelligence, deep fakes, image generation, audio processing. There's a whole bunch of crazy, crazy bits of technology and it's working now on our machines. So we use Puget Computers for all of our computers here. And for that's us to a, be able to do what we do and to experiment, a, we need these powerful plug. computers to be able to pull that off. Hey, Especially as Corridor more of us here it. have gotten these new systems and across the board, we're all just like, yeah, all of our computers are good enough for us to not have to think about them. That's the point. The moment you start having to think about whether or not what tool you're using is going to work for you, it's already over. Before coming yeah. to Corridor Digital. I love that. I love that idea. But we got we to gotta keep things on a budget. So, but that's not to say that Puget won't be the right answer. The build um, that I'm looking at could be less than 5,000. It could be 4,700. 
um, could go up to a different build 5500 and the monitor that the Thales metahuman developer works on he uses two of these Dell U2 7200Q ultra sharp 27 inch 16 by 9 HDR 4K IPS monitors so 27 inch that's great that's the same as what I'm used to with my iMac Pro um, so I could just shift right over and it would be a downgrade uh, as far as resolution uh, but HDR they'd both be HDR and uh, what's the um, what's the refresh rate 60 Hertz okay yeah so basically Thales for those of you who, who want to get started but don't want to break the bank what I took away from it is you know don't go for the top spec uh, PC if you're just getting started you it they for their professional work they use an RTX 2080 I didn't ask what their CPU was but if you want to dive deeper there's two things that I'm going to recommend reading this Puget document, which I will do, and then watching uh, Punisher's video about um, what digital artists need to know about hardware, all parts guide. So he's got his old computer and his new yeah, computer. The paper. As far as tech specs go, Unreal Engine, Blender, and C4D each call for their individual VRAM minimums. But the more the better. The NVIDIA Quadro the more, the better. 6000 has 24, and the A6000 has 48. This card alone has unlocked my ability to create larger scenes in 3D. Back in the day, I was working on a GTX 1070, and I think I got some good renders out with this 1070. You don't have to go all out right at the gates. Invest in yourself over time. Invest in your career over time. All right, so let's talk about storage. The main difference between our three hard drive options is really storage space. You know, a two terabyte SSD is gonna cost more than a 500 gigabyte SSD. So a great rule to live by is to install your operating system and programs on an SSD, while everything else lives on a basic hard drive. The idea is to speed up boot and launch times by reserving a faster drive for the important. He looks like Paul Rudd. Okay. Um, so that's really great. And you can get a condensed version for those of you who like to read. This is one page that pretty much talks about all of that. And Puget covers it. Um, what's the best CPU for Unreal Engine? For most users, Intel Core i9-13900K. That is what they were running the procedural um, environment demo. Uh, at the most recent Unreal, State of Unreal. That's 24 cores. And the AMD Ryzen 7900X 12 core are both terrific. So, but here's the important thing. How does Unreal Engine utilize the CPU? The CPU is one of the most important pieces of an Unreal Engine development workstation. While many other parts of the system impact performance to some degree, the CPU is the core piece of hardware that is a part of absolutely anything and everything you do. Based on, your, based on our extensive CPU testing in Unreal Editor, we have narrowed down the hundreds of CPUs available to just a few that are the best choices for developing in Unreal Editor. So, I wonder if going for like a mid-tier uh, workstation and choosing like the best CPU they have to offer for that, and then going to the video card and choosing the worst, <laughs> choosing the least expensive rather, and then you equal out to less than the compact workstation, you're, on Puget, your checkout would be 4200, so 16 core AMD Ryzen, you know, maybe you, you start with a, a less expensive graphics card, and you start with the more expensive CPU, because Upgrading the CPU, you can see, is less expensive than upgrading graphics cards by a lot. So maybe that's the thing to start strong and upgrade the graphics card later. 
because graphics cards are big upgrade cost and you could see how your workstation is working for your needs and maybe as Puget says the CPU is the most important part maybe you start strong there maybe if you're going to do something that's uh, above the middle of the road make your CPU higher end and your graphics card keep that middle of the road because as they say here how does Unreal Engine utilize video cards? Unreal Engine utilizes the video card primarily to display the graphics on the screen. Duh. Many applications in other fields have begun to use the GPUs for other tasks as well, but this is only starting to be implemented in Unreal Editor. Because of this, a faster video card will give you a higher FPS in the viewport or a standalone game, but likely will not improve your productivity in other tasks. And so they have a breakdown of the difference between the graphics cards so relative frames per second, 90 for the 4090, 60 for the 4080, and then down to the 3080, which I was just looking at, closer to 40 frames per second. What was that? Unreal Engine 4.26. Why is there no Unreal Engine 5? So the 4090 is always ahead by like 10 or 20 compared to the next lower, the 4080. Yeah, I wonder. I really wish I knew more smart people. So if you have advice, please reach out to me. I want to know. Otherwise, if uh, if you're on this at the beginning of this learning journey like I am, you know, come along. I'm going to be figuring this out because I'm going to be pulling the trigger on one of these PCs soon. Okay, thanks. Love you. Bye.